Oh, God bless you. Praise the Lord. God bless you. My name is Minister Red. I am the pastor here at Christ Our Life Ministries, located in Augusta, Georgia, on 308 Rose Street, directly behind the Walmart loads on Bobby Jones Expressway, Interstate 520, heading west. I want to thank you for joining me for my Thursday night service, along with my members, a member of Roland and his beautiful wife, Sister Brittany Peachy, Sister Selena, and our beautiful husband, Stan, my brother, Minister Harry Harvey, Harvey Cole, and his beautiful wife, Sister Kimberly, my sister, Tanisha Pratt, amen, and my brother, Harvey Evans, amen, I mean, Harry Evans, Harry Evans, amen, and we want to continue to remember his wife, Sister Beverly Conyers Evans, who went on to be with the Lord on March the 4th of 2022. She was a pillar of this ministry. We love her. We miss her. We thank God for her. Sister Erica Holloman, I love you. Thank you for joining me tonight. Pastor King, my man, God bless you, sir. Thank you for joining me tonight. Sorry I couldn't join you Tuesday night. That migraine headache was working me over, and I just went on and went to sleep. Amen. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus. I love you, Pastor King. I love you, my friend. Love you, Sister Erica Holloman. Thank y'all for joining me tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining my sister church, Spirit of Liberties Ministries, pastored by the phenomenal minister, Kenya King, and his beautiful wife, Sister Donna King. They have services every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. and every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. You ought to join them and be blessed to hear an awesome, awesome word of God being taught by a minister that knows God's word in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I am on YouTube. There are over 400 messages on my YouTube channel. You ought to join them and be blessed. Amen. Free of charge. Asking you for no finances. Just want to feed you the word of God so that you'll know that there is a man of God that is still living in obedience to the word of God and teaching the living word of God under the anointing of God. Hallelujah. Tonight's teaching, part three, the final part, the final part, part three of learning how to live when your life is on fire. Learning how to live when your life is on fire. Hallelujah. A burning sensation in the body. Fire is a burning sensation in the body. Sensation is a widespread reaction or feeling. Hallelujah. And that widespread reaction occurs in our emotions. Hallelujah. Foundational verse again is James 3 and 6. It says, the tongue is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body. And it sets the course of one's life on fire and it itself set on fire by hell. Hallelujah. Let us pray and go before the Lord with a word of prayer. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for part three, the final part to this series. God, we love you. We thank you for part one and part two on this fiery tongue that we have. Thank you, Lord, for giving us revelation knowledge concerning something that we have not yet grasped through the scriptures about your word, that we may receive it tonight, that we may receive enlightenment in our spirit man. It's in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. God bless you, Dick and Stevenson. I love y'all. Thank you for being with me tonight. Part three, learning how to live when your life is on fire. Notice I said, when your life is on fire, not, not, not the Christ life, because the Christ life, we know, that it, it, we know that it can live through the fire. The three Hebrew boys live the Christ life. We, we know that that life, that's why this thing says, learning how to live when your life is on fire. So that you'll make sure that you stay in the Christ life and don't get in your life because our life is full of emotions. Hallelujah. Believers today have been taught so much about the joy of the Lord being our strength. 
But what they have not been taught is why the joy of the Lord has to be our strength. James 1 and 2 says to count it all joy. Count it all joy when you fall in the various trials. See, because your life is going to fall in the various trials. Knowing that the testing of your faith, which is supposed to be your now life, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. See, faith is supposed to be your life now. Faith is supposed to be your life now. Faith can make it through through any fire. The question is, is, is can, you, can you make it through the fire with your faith? Oh, my man, Minister Tremel, God bless you, sir. Thank you for joining me tonight. Tremel, the question is, is can we know that faith can make it through the fire. The question is, can you make it through the fire with the faith or, 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 or is your faith going to get shipwrecked? Because faith will make it through the fire. The question is, can you make it through the fire with the faith that you have? That's the question. Because this verse says, not if, but when. See, not if, but when you fall in. See, because cause cause, cause, cause the, cause the, cause the enemy going to make sure that the Christ life goes through the fire. Because his whole job is to try to separate you from your very faith. If he can separate you from your very faith, it, you're not going to make it through the fire. You're not going to make it through the fire. God bless you, Sister Beard. Ain't Maxine, I love you. Tell Rick I said hello in the name of Jesus. See, we got to count it all joy. See, that, that right there, you know, you know if, you don't, if you don't count it all joy, God bless you, my niece Amy, I love you. If you don't count it all joy, when you fall in, into, some, into some, some serious stuff, and I'm going to come visit too, Maxine, I promise. Hallelujah. If you don't count it all joy when you fall into various trials, then, then, uh, then apparently you must have been separated from your faith. Because your faith will bring you through any trial and it will bring you out as pure gold, not as melted brass in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Why does the Lord allow us to fall in the various trials? Why does he do that? Why does he do that? Because various trials become our pathway to spiritual maturity. It's only one way God to know if we're, if, we're, if we're maturing spiritually. He allows us to fall in the various trials. Those pathways, those those. Various trials bring us into many situations to see if we are walking in the spirit or if we're walking in the flesh. That, that's the purpose for these trials. The purpose for these trials is, is, to, is to let you know, God know, the enemy know, other believers know just who you really are. Just if you are really a faithful person, if you can really stand up to the trials of life and be able to come out as pure gold. Galatians 5 and 16 says, This I say then, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Sister Erica Holloman, the number one reason the number one reason why many of us have not learned how to live when our life's on fire is because many of us still walk in our emotions. We, we, we still walk in our emotions. We, 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 just ain't, we just ain't getting it that when emotions is going to shut down whatever Christ-like attributes you have. The nine aspects of the Spirit they, they, I'm going to tell you, you, you can forget it if you're getting in your emotions. You can forget it. God bless you, Sister Stella. I love you. Hallelujah. That's why the number one reason. That is the number one reason why many of us have not learned how to live when our life's on fire. When our life's on fire. It's because we still walk in our emotions. 
we still walk, I'm gonna tell you, we're still walking in our emotions. Emotions are not allowed on the pathway to spiritual maturity. They are not allowed on the pathway to spiritual maturity. The pathway to spiritual maturity is a pathway of faith. Whenever we walk this pathway, whenever we walk the pathway to spiritual maturity, we should be learning how to live by faith, even though our life is on fire from numerous fiery trials that we find ourselves confronted with on an everyday basis. Maturity, here it is. Maturity is learning to walk away from people and situations that threaten our peace of mind and our faithfulness. If you can't do that, then you then you have not spiritually matured yet. And you will fall prey to your emotions every time and you will not make it through the fire. You will not make it. First Corinthians 4 and 2 says, Moreover, it is required in stewards. See, we are stewards. It is required in stewards that a man be found faithful, not found in his emotions. We supposed to be found faith in faithfulness, not in our emotions. But I'm telling you, too many believers today that are emotional people, too emotional, can't handle nothing, can't handle no fiery furnace. God bless you, Wolfie, I love you. Thank you for joining me. Hallelujah. Fiery trials, watch this right here. Them fiery trials that God allow us to experience they reveal whether or not we still live in our emotions. That's, that's the purpose. Of, the whole purpose of fiery trials is to show you, God, and everybody else whether or not you're an emotional born-again believer. That's the purpose of fiery trials. And the gates of hell knows this. But Jesus says, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Well, because the church ain't an emotional place. It is a spiritual place, and if you're going to say you are a born-again believer, then that means you're a part of the church, and I want to know why you're so emotional. Because them five child is coming to tell the world, God, and us whether or not we still live in our emotions. The gates of hell knows this, so every evil spirit, watch this, every evil spirit in hell, every evil spirit catches a rod on our thoughts that are not God's thoughts. Because then, because Isaiah 55 and 8 said, God says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts and your ways are not my ways. So evil spirits, they catch a ride on our thoughts. And they set them thoughts on fire with a tongue. Hallelujah. They catch a ride on our thoughts that are not God's thoughts and they and, and sets our tongue on fire because they know it cannot be tamed. Oh, yeah, emotional born-again believers, Deacon Stevenson, emotional. Supposed to be born again and shouldn't even have no emotions. That means the cross ain't, ain't did a deeper work in them. That means the, that mean the, the, the cross ain't did nothing in them because the cross should have killed all your emotions. Somebody say something to you, you can't take it. The enemy, these fiery trials, they're going to test you. And then they're going to catch a ride on them thoughts of yours. And then it's going to set your tongue on fire because they know that that tongue can't be tamed. And while we have not learned this from scripture, shows that we are immature born again believers. We just ain't getting it. We, 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 still, we still respond to fiery trials the way we responded before we came to Christ. Any believer, any believer who hasn't come to understand that the pathway of faith is paved with fiery trials, if, if, if your church, if whoever you've been sitting under, whoever been pastoring you, if they have not told you that the pathway of faith is paved with fiery trials, it ain't paved with prosperity. It ain't paved with healing. It ain't paid with blessing. No, it's paid with fiery trust. If you can get to the end 
other fiery trial, then you can get to prosperity. If you can get to the end of the fiery trial, then you can get to healing. If you can get to the end of the fiery trial, then you can get your blessing. You ain't getting no blessing if you don't go through something. You, man, I was a, you, Pastor King. Man, we was all in the military. You wasn't getting, we, we wasn't getting the first sergeant without coming through basic training. We, we, we weren't going to get rewarded a uh, private strike without going through, we weren't going to PFC, specialist, sergeant, staff sergeant, some first class, uh, first, we weren't, we, we, we had to go, we had to go through some fiery trials to get there. If you're a supervisor of a job, you didn't just go in the door and supervise. You had to work your way up. To, you had to go through some fiery trials. You didn't just come out of kindergarten and then the next, you looked at your report card and it says pass to the 12th grade. No, you got to go through some fiery trials. If you are not sitting on a pastor that's teaching you about these fiery trials you're going to face, as a born again believer, you better get out of there. You're gonna get out of there because I'm gonna tell you something now. Cause you, cause you're gonna, you're gonna always look for a a a a life full of joy. Oh yeah, we had to go through the fiery trials of the promotion boards. They don't understand that Pastor King. Hallelujah! Had to measure them, them ribbons and them and them medallions and things. Man, it was a mess. PLDC, B knock, A knock, all of that mess. Fiery trials. The pathway of faith is paved with fiery trials. Man, we we this this the Christianity, the, the life of a born again believer is is based off of faith. And because it's based off of faith, the faith must be tested through fiery trials. And if you are sitting under a pastor that ain't teaching you nothing about fiery trials. You better get out of there because, because I don't know what he's teaching you. I don't know because what because if he ain't, if he ain't talking to you about somebody going to say something that's going to set you off. And that person that's going to set you off is the person that, that you know to be a born again believer. Man, Jesus, man, the Jews killed Jesus, man. He wasn't killed by no, no, no people that, that wasn't his cousins. Why? 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 Why must? Why do you need to find your church that teaches about fiery trials? Because for some unknown reason, Pastor King, for some unknown reason, believers think Christian living frees us from a life full of fiery trials. I don't. I don't know where we get it from. I, I don't know where we get this mindset that that everything is supposed to be. Fine and then everything's supposed to go our way. Everything's supposed to just fall right in line with, with exactly the way it's supposed to be. No, 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 no. Jesus clearly tells us, clearly tells us that, that this is not going to happen. That's, that's not going to happen. You, you're not going to have no walk in the park. No, Christian, the, the life of a born again believer, you ain't walking in the park. You ain't walking in the park with your wife. You ain't walking in the park with your husband. You ain't walking in the park with your family members. You ain't walking in the park. You're going to walk a fiery trail. Oh, yeah, Pastor Kim, we got to count it all joy. I don't care how fiery the, the thing. Man, you got you to count it all joy because that is where your strength goes. You got to make sure that the enemy sees that you are unfazed. And if he can see that you're phased, if he can see that you're phased, then he'll say, Oh, Pastor King and his emotions, I got him. Deacon Stevenson and his emotions, I got him, I got him, I got him, I got him, and their emotions, I got him. They're not going to make it through the fire. Jesus says in John 16 and 33, says, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me, not in your emotions, that in me you might have peace, that you might have peace, that you might have freedom from warfare. Freedom from problems. Did you know in Christ, watch this. He is saying here, in me ye might have peace. You know why he had to put the word might in there? Because because he don't know, because you, you, you might start acting in your feelings. You might get in your emotions. 
That's why he says that you might have peace. He, he, he's hoping that you have peace, but he don't know because he don't, he don't know whether or not you're going to be able to walk this pathway of spiritual maturity. He says, I have spoken, I have spoken unto you that in me you might have peace in the world. Where do you think you at? In the world, you should have tribulation. You better never wake up in the morning and think that you somewhere other than in this world. You are in Christ, but you're still in the world. He says, Father, I pray that you do not take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil in the world. That was a prayer that he prayed in John 17 and 16. He said, I pray that you do not take them out of the world, but I pray that you keep them from the evil one. Sanctify them by thy truth. Thy word is truth. Y'all better look at that up. John 17, 16 and 17. You better look that up. In the world, you should have tribulation. In the world, you're going to have fiery trials. But be a good cheer. Be of good cheer. Now, this is the word of God telling us this. This ain't Moses telling us this. This ain't Elijah telling us this. This ain't none of his disciples telling us this. This is the Lord himself telling us to be of good cheer. Niece Amy, I, there is a reason why we are facing the problems we face today. The purpose for why we face the problems we face today, the fiery trials, is to is to is to is to show us how mature we are in the word of God. And the way to prove that you are you are matured in the word of God is you'll let that you'll you'll let that water you'll let it run down your back. You'll you 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 let it be gone. You'll let it be gone. You'll be silent about it. You'll be silent about it. Y'all know what silence is. Y'all know what I'm going to take. I'm, it's on the board. I'm going to show y'all what silence is. Y'all might want to write this down and, and, and keep it before your eyeballs. Silence. Silence is a moment in time. No, not in eternity. Silence is a moment in time where our emotions just cannot find any words to say. That's what silence is. It is a moment in time where our emotions just cannot find any words to say. Your life today has resulted from one of the two things said in Isaiah 55 and 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways. Your thoughts determine your emotions. Your thoughts determine your emotions. But if you'll just remain silent, if you're just if you're just for a moment in time where your emotions just cannot find any words to say, oh, if you can do that. But, you, but can you do that, though? Can you do that? Can, can you do that? Because cause, cause during that moment in time, that moment in time is what I call the fiery trials. During the fiery trials, our emotions should not be able to find any words to say. If it's going to say anything, it should say in the hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. God bless you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I glorify you. Lord, if you ain't saying that, I'm going to tell you, you're messing up. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you what you, your, your mind, your mind is, is coming out of the heavens. We are in Christ. Therefore, we should have learned how to live when our life's on fire. We should have learned how to overcome everything nasty that is said to us. I'm Dick and Stevenson. Watch, man, Dick and Stevenson. Man, me and you've been, Dick and Stevenson, I know me and you've been serving the Lord since 1993. I, I know that. By now, me and you should have been able to figure out how to overcome nasty conversations. We're talking about over 30 years now. We should have figured this out. We, we, we should have figured out how to operate in silence. Watch this. If, you, if, you, if you've been listening to me 
since January the 1st of this year, you should have learned how to operate in silence by now. A moment in time where our emotions just cannot find any words to say, I'm gonna tell you the next time somebody put that fiery tongue on you, you better not find nothing to say. You better shut up and allow silence to keep you faithful to who you claim to be. God allows us to experience fiery trials to strengthen us in our inner man, but what many believers have allowed trials to do is cause a rising and a falling in their emotions, but because they can't overcome somebody's tongue. Am I talking to you? I want to know if I'm talking to you tonight. You can, you, I'm going to tell you something. You know what? When y'all get quiet and y'all don't write no comments, I know I'm tying y'all up. I ain't getting no amens. I ain't getting no, yeah, you, you, that's, that's exactly what I want you to do. Keep your hands off of typing anything to me. I want you to hear. I'm talking about the rising and the falling of your emotions when somebody's tongue talks to you that in a word that you don't want to hear. In a word that you don't want to hear. I want to know how you acting. I want to know how you acting. You know why I want to know how you acting? Because if I can, because if I know how you acting, then it means you know how you acting. And if you know how you acting, and I know how you acting, then that means God knows how you acting. Fiery trials that come to strengthen us in our inner man to help us to be able to stand against the fiery darts of the devil, but that ain't happening. These five trials is causing us to rise and fall in our emotions because we can't overcome somebody's tongue. I'm not talking to you. The church today is filled with emotional believers, filled with a bunch of emotional believers. Not only can they not handle the truth of God's word, they can't handle the fiery trials of everyday living in this world of sin, they can't handle it. And they wonder why, they wonder why it just seems like the one is in heaven is opening up for everybody but them. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna ask you this question. I'm, oh, I'm gonna tell you, you better hear me. Watch this question right here. Why would God open up the one is in heaven and pour you out a blessing if you done been burned up in the fiery trial, who, I mean, for what? The, the, what? To pour out the, the, the blessing to, to, to the person that no longer exists? God's not going to pour out his blessing on no sinner that's, that's caused a simple child of God that's not living right. That's not living right. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. No, you're not, you're not, you're not getting, you're not getting no blessing. You're not getting no blessing. You've been burned, you've been burned up. You've been burned up. Lot's wife was supposed to get a blessing, but she didn't get it because she got burned up. You ain't getting no blessing. Next time you think, you make sure now, now the next time, now make sure now when you go praying to God and you be praying to God, make, make sure you, you make sure before you open your mouth and say anything to God, make sure you check to see whose mouth done set you off and you still burning in your emotions from it. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why you can't handle the fiery trials of everyday living in this world of sin. I'm going to tell you why. Hebrews 12 and 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and finish of our faith. No, not you though. Not you. You ain't. You ain't. You ain't looking under Jesus. Uh, you. 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 You looking at the person that, that that went off on you. You looking at that person that, that that talked about you. You looking at the person that 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 did you wrong. You looking at everything but the author and the finisher of your faith. You looking under Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Who for the joy? What joy? The joy of overcoming fiery trials. Who for the joy that was set before him. I'm telling you, it's going to be some fiery trials set before you. And you got to have joy when you run into them. Your joy will bring you through. And when your joy brings you through, 
there is a blessing waiting on you. And the reason y'all ain't getting your blessing is because you don't know how to make it through the prophet. I'm telling you, Pastor Red be getting blessings. You know why Pastor Red gets blessings? You know why? Because Pastor Red understands silence. Pastor Red understands that silence is a moment in time where our emotions just cannot find words. Oh, Pastor Red's emotions on fire. Pastor Red's emotions be on fire. But Pastor Red, the master, the art of shutting up. Pastor Red won't say nothing. Pastor, I'm going to tell you, that, that is something that Pastor Red had to learn. It says, though he were a son, yet learned the obedience by the things which he suffered. That's the number one verse that stays in my head. When I feel myself in a suffering situation, I say, oh, oh God, 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 I, I got to learn obedience here. And so God, in, in, in the process of me learning this obedience from this suffering trial right here, I'm going to shut up. I'm going to make sure that I... When I move here, I'm going to make sure that I move in faith and not move in my emotions. Do you do that? Do, do, do you talk to God before you, before you move? Do you talk to God before you move? Because you're supposed to be moving forward, but you don't move forward in your emotions. You ain't supposed to be moving forward in your emotions. You're supposed to be moving forward in the word of God. Jesus Christ, the author and finish of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. The enemy needs to get you off the cross because if he can get you off the cross, then because the cross crucifies the emotions. Who endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. In the name of Jesus, the joy of overcoming fiery trials in the name of Jesus. You know why you know why believers don't enjoy fiery trials? You know why y'all don't enjoy emotions? Because your emotions are slaves to your thoughts. And you are slaves to your emotions. See, see, your emotions is slave to thoughts. That's why, that's why, that's why when you get in them emotions, you, you all types of thoughts jump on your head. The thought, that's why God says the thoughts and imaginations of the heart of man was evil continuously. The only, the, so these emotions is going to attack your thoughts, which is evil continuously, because emotions are slaves to the thoughts. And then, but, but, but we are slaves to our emotions. Are you a slave to your emotions? I'm gonna tell you something right now. If you if 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 when you get if when if when your life is on fire from what somebody's tongue done done to you and you can't seem to get out of it, then you're a slave to your emotions. There was no way that the children of Israel was getting out of Egypt if God wouldn't have sent Moses. There's no way you're getting out of this this carnal mindset, this atomic nature of yours without the Christ life. You're not getting out of it. And every time you, you flare up in your emotions, every time you flare up in your emotions, it's proof that you have not matured spiritually. You have not because, because, because once you mature spiritually, you have, you, you master, you master the art of shutting up. You master the art of what, what, whether somebody else, when there's a difference of belief and somebody don't believe what you say, and then you, and then it just sets you off, then nobody, that, that that person won't, won't receive what you got to say. Man, Jesus didn't care if people didn't receive what he said. Jesus says, if you do not believe that I am he, you're going to die in your sins. The only thing as a pastor that I would recommend that you say to a person, say, you know, if you, don't, if you don't believe this word of God, then I'm telling you, you're going to die in your sins. Let, you know, it's one, I got one motto. My, my friend here tells me all the time, he said, man, that's the best thing you ever told me. My motto is, I would rather you be mad at me than not be mad at you. Man, I'm not going to be mad at you. I ain't thinking about you. I'm going to tell you the word of God. And if you don't like it, I don't care what you don't like. I ain't going to get mad at you. I don't care if you... If you don't like my preaching, I don't care if you don't walk in my teaching. I don't, I don't care what you do. I'm not going to get mad about it. Because you're going to die. And I'm going to die. In this word that I preach, in this word that I teach, I stand behind it 100% that it is what God is saying. 
and 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 what even confirms that even the more is the the way it's touching you tonight because you know that your emotions are slaves to your thoughts and you know that you're a slave to your emotions because if you weren't a slave to your emotion then you would know how to remain silent when somebody puts their tongue on you as believers we have to keep our emotions silent silence is the fence around wisdom if you if your foot slips you can always regain your balance but if your tongue slips you can never recall them words so think before saying anything you gotta you gotta be quick to hear slow to speak and slow to wrath for the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Y'all better read the book of James. You better read it. If the tongue slips, you can never recall the words. And if you got a slippery tongue, it is because you are an emotional believer. The gates of hell is waiting on you to break your silence so it can set your tongue on fire. The gates of hell is waiting, is waiting. The gates of hell, that's what I'm talking. Jesus says, upon this rock, I'm gonna build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Well, the gates of hell says, you know what? I'm gonna cause these people to, to say some nasty words to them emotional born again believers. And then I'm just gonna wait for them to break their silence. And then I'm going to set their tongue on fire and they're going to go off on the person that went up on them because they ain't got, because they're spiritually immature. They don't, they say they on the pathway of spiritual maturity, but they're not. They're still behaving like children. They don't understand nothing about spiritual warfare. They taught, take unto you the whole armor of God, and they the most unarmor of God wearing this person in the world. But all I see is a bunch of feelings. All I see is a bunch of emotional believers. Listen to what this listen to their words. Listen to their words. The lack of silence. The lack of silence is the primary reason for why you have not learned how to live your life when it's on fire. When you have not learned how to live when your life is on fire. The lack of silence. Man, I'm gonna tell you something right now. I'm gonna tell you something right now. I, I tell you, 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 you've, got, you've, you've got to give it a try. You, you got you got to you got to you got to be silent you got to see that silence works I'm telling you silence works silence works man if Samson would have just remained silent man if Samson would have just remained silent You know, you know, you know what, you know what? I'm gonna tell you. King Hezekiah, you know, he got sick and, and then God healed him. And so then the the pagan kings that came up to him, brought him gifts out to God to heal him. You know what this dude did? You know what he did? This guy opened his mouth and told them everything that was that was in his house. That's what y'all dummies do. Y'all dummies do that. I'm gonna call you a dummy. You're a dummy. Because you you you'll go out there and you you'll tell everybody what's going on in your house. Because you 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 caught up in your emotions. 
So 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 what's going on in your house? If if if, if, if something if something goes on, Dickens Stevenson, if something goes on in your house, Pastor King, if something goes on in your house, Sister Holloman, if something goes on in your house, Sister Stella, if something goes on in your house, my niece Amy, if something goes on in your house, if something goes on in your house, Sister Maxine, if something goes on in your house and somebody finds out about it that were not in your house when that occurred, you know what I mean? Your emotions released it because it shouldn't have. It shouldn't have released it. It shouldn't have released it. Y'all know the saying, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. What happens in your house don't stay in your house. Everybody know what's going up, going in your house. Everybody know when you, when, 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 the, when the man cheats on the wife. Everybody knows when the wife cheats on the man. Everybody know, because somehow it got out there. Who, who, who put it out there? Because somebody come remain silent. But you know, but but they but Pastor King, but they they but you know, I know they heard the scripture uh, for us not to uh, not to expose your brother's nakedness. That's why they cursed. You know what I mean? Noah's son went up and saw his daddy naked, and he went and told his two brothers. Went and told his two brothers. Cause you know, cause we, cause you know, cause we 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 don't know how to control our emotions. Our emotions make us talk. Our emotions control our mouth. But yet we'll say, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord. And the Lord be like, nothing not gonna happen with your emotional self. All I hear is an emotional mess. I ain't heard no praise come out of your mouth. The lack of silence is the primary reason for why you have not learned how to live when your life is on fire. And you, and, and I'm gonna tell you something right now. You exactly right. You, I'm gonna tell you something right now. You, if I took a, if I took a piece of, of some fire, and, and and put it and put it on you, you 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 will talk to me. You you will say something. But I'm gonna tell you something. My, Hallelujah, Nebuchadnezzar threw them three Hebrew boys in the fiery furnace. It was a hot fire. How do I know it was a hot fire? Because the Bible says, uh, Scripture says uh, that the men that threw them in the fire was consumed by the fire in the name of Jesus. Uh, hallelujah, but when them three Hebrew boys, uh, when they was in the fire, you only saw them talking to the author and the finisher of their faith. Hallelujah. Looking under Jesus, uh, the author and finisher of our faith, uh, who for the joy that was set before him endured the fiery furnace of Nebuchadnezzar's fire, despising the shame, uh, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Not you, though. Your tail is, your tail laying out there at the front of the of the, of the fiery furnace with the with the rest of the dead emotional or people that, that throw people in the fire. Because you don't know how to be silent and walk the pathway of spiritual maturity that is that is full of fiery trials. And you think that Christianity is a cakewalk. I don't know I don't know what we well, we think that Christianity is a cakewalk. I see churches sometimes, they mean they be they be laughing. <laughs> I mean the whole church service is a bunch of laughter. A bunch of stupid jumping up and down, stupid dancing around, shouting, music playing. Pastors wanna jump up and down. Everybody wanna dance. Everybody wanna speak loud. Everybody wanna wanna get real loud. But every last one of them emotional. That, that's why, that's why you, I, I'm going to say it. I don't care. Get off my Facebook page. All them, you, you going, them, them is emotional churches. Them is emotional churches. I ain't thinking about your emotional church. Let me see, let me see some members that can handle fiery trials that's coming out of your emotional, jumping up and down, shouting, no pants wearing, 3,000 pound fruit basket hat wearing, 
female women. Let me see them operate outside of emotion. They can't do it because just as soon as somebody talk about them, they go back running. Ooh, she was talking about the first lady. Ooh, -hoo. you just so you just so you just got to be the person to make sure that everybody knows that so and so was talking about the first lady. You you got to make sure you be the you be the the herald. You got to make sure you run with the with the information that somebody was talking about the pastor. You ain't gonna, I'm gonna tell you something right now. I'm gonna, there, are, there, are, there, are, there are emotional believers that's gonna, that's gonna take that and run with it. You don't have to run with it. And if somebody says, did you know, did you know, uh, if somebody was saying to me, hey, Pastor Red, did you know that uh, they was talking about Pastor King? I say, yeah, cause I don't wanna, I say, yeah. Then they said, why didn't you say nothing about it? Uh, because, uh, I knew your tail was gonna say something about it. Well, I need to say something. You, you the, you the church gossiper. You the person that want to run your mouth. You, you the person want to make sure that you set the whole church on fire with your nosy telling everything. Don't know how to be silent self. Some things just not need to be addressed. And if they're gonna be addressed, then make sure it's not addressed by you the spiritually mature person. And if somebody got a problem with you not opening your mouth, if somebody got a problem with you being more spiritually mature than them, then let them have a problem. Don't do what they do. Be more mature than them. Daniel 7 and 25. Here it is, brother Deacon Stevenson. And he shall speak great words. But where, where them words come from? They come from a tongue. He shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High. See the difference here? Look at the difference. This is what Satan does. He, he, he speaks great words against the Most High. You know why he speaks great words against the Most High? Because the Most High ain't spiritual. He, I mean, he ain't emotional. The Most High ain't emotional. He's spiritual. The most high is spirit. So that's all he can do. Because spirits don't have emotions. And if, you, and if you're nailed to the cross, you shouldn't have emotions. He shall speak great words against the most high. That's all he can do. All he can do is talk about the most high. But look what did, but look, but he shall wear out the saints of the most high. How are he gonna do it? How's he gonna do it? With the tongue on your emotions. He's going to wear you out with the tongue on your emotions. And he is doing a masterful job in the lives of many believers today. He's doing a masterful job. He, he, I bet you, I bet you he's doing a masterful job on you. Oh, so, come on now. You know I got it. You know I got it. The mirror. The mirror knows, the mirror, besides God and the devil, two other things know who controls your tongue, who controls your emotion. You and the person you see in that mirror, them the two people that, four people know, God, the devil, you, and the person you see in that mirror, them the four people to know how emotionally unstable you are. You are emotionally unstable. You ain't stable. You ain't stable because, because if you were stable in your emotions, then you would be able to remain silent in the face of fiery trials. Silence is a source of great strength. It is the pathway to spiritual maturity. It's just really important that we learn this. It's really important that we learn that silence is a source of great strength. The enemy needs you to talk. And he needs to make sure that when you talk, that your words is not words of grace, 
that have been seasoned with salt. He needs to have, he needs to make sure that you're an ungraceful word talker and that every last one of them words has zero salt in them. We're supposed to be speaking words of grace that are seasoned with salt, not seasoned with the mess that's going on on the pathway of spiritual maturity that's paved with fiery trials. Learning how to live when your life is on fire. Learning how to live when your thoughts just won't stop burning with a sensation that you, that just all of a sudden puts so much pressure on your mind that you just gotta talk. And when you got that type of pressure on the mind, the tongue is not going to speak gracious words. Christ's mind was never under so much pressure that it never spoke the word of God. The enemy put pressure on his mind in Matthew chapter 4 when he was led of the spirit into the wilderness. Not that when he was led on some vacation in the Caribbean island. Not that when he was led on some vacation in uh, Alaska. But when he was led into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And the only thing that came off of Jesus' tongue was, it is written. Now, if, if, if you don't know what's written, then you shouldn't be opening your mouth. Because we saw what Jesus did. He says, it is written. It is written. It is written. So when you, when somebody puts their tongue on you, if, if, you're, if, if, when, if your reply is not, it is written, then I'm going to tell you right now, you are an emotional believer. And I don't care how much you disagree with what I just said. You are an emotional believer. And you will not make it through the fire. You'll not make it. King Saul was an emotional leader. When the man of God, Samuel, came up, Samuel said, what in the world is this bleeping the sheep in my ear? He says, the people, the people didn't, didn't listen to me. So he, so he was emotional. He was an emotional guy. He was afraid of the people. Fear is an emotion. It is a spirit of emotion. If you are afraid to stand up for Christ, you are an emotional believer. If you are ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, you are an emotional believer. If you are afraid to tell people that you don't support that, because of your, because of what Christ has revealed to you to be not kingdom business, you are an emotional believer. You do not need me to stand here before you tonight to give you different scenarios of how to understand what an emotional believer is because you already know what an emotional believer is. You want me to tell you how I know you know what emotional belief is? Because first of all, you are a believer and you know how emotional you are. So just put the two together. Either remain silent on the pathway of, of spiritual maturity that's paved with fiery trials or keep talking. Just keep on talking then. But I'm going to tell you this. 
if you've been asking God for something and you just know that you can't stay out of drama and you just seem like everybody is getting blessed but you this message tonight is to tell you why you're not getting blessed I'm going to tell you again, the reason why you're not getting blessed is because when the winners of heaven opened up and God pours you out a blessing on the pathway of faith, the pathway of spiritual maturity, you're dead, burnt up in the fire from somebody's tongue that, that the blessing never reaches you. Have you, here we go, you Christmassy people, so I'll make sure you understand what I'm saying. Have you, have you ever bought a dead person a Christmas present? Have you ever gave a dead person a gift? Have you ever, have you ever did it? Well, if you did, you're an idiot because they're not going to get the gift because they're dead. So if you're dead in trespasses and in sins, then how can you get the gift that God has opened up the windows of heaven and poured you out a blessing where you ain't got enough room to receive it if you're dead in trespasses and in sins? Dead in trespasses and in sin because you couldn't handle the fire of somebody's tongue on your life. You're going to have to learn how to uh, take what people say to you, understand this message, and start grasping the understanding of a burning sensation in your body that is not from the Holy Ghost. There is two sensations you should feel in your body. You should, God says, I will write my laws in their heart. You should have a burning fire inside of you. Jeremiah said it's just like fire shut up in my bone. He was talking about the word of God. He wasn't talking about his emotions. He wasn't talking about emotions. So either it is the word of God burning like fire in your bones or it's emotions burning up in your bones which is not allowed on the pathway of spiritual maturity. Thank you, Pastor King. Because I don't know where I got that analogy from, but God gave it to me in the name of Jesus. Y'all are I'm going to tell you something tonight. And this is what I always like to try to say during my messages. Man, you are so anointed. Y'all are so anointed. Man, I'm going to tell you something. Pastor Red ain't got nothing on y'all. I don't care if I stand there and preach the way I, Man, I ain't got nothing on y'all. You know why I ain't got nothing on y'all? Because I got the same thing y'all got. The Bible says that everybody that went into the vineyard, when they came out, everybody was given a penny. I got a penny. You got a penny. The question is, how mature are you with the penny you got? If it's a, if it's a difference between you and Pastor Red, then it is a maturity difference. It, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't the born again difference. No, the, the born again is they, they the same. The, the the Bible, the Bible that I'm reading. The Bible that I'm reading, you reading. You you got the. I'm gonna tell you, Pastor. Pastor Red ain't doing no sneaky sneaky mess. No no, I'm just reading. I'm just reading. I'm just reading the Bible. That's all I'm doing. Every time I come here Thursday and Sunday, all I'm doing is just telling y'all what's what I'm getting out of the Bible. You, you that's what I'm trying to say. If there is a difference between us, it is the maturity level. So when so if if tomorrow 
you start operating as a mature Christian, you didn't call me. You didn't, I'm gonna tell you, you could, you could, you could be Pastor Red mature tonight. How do you get Pastor Red mature tonight? You stop living by emotions. That's all it is. How do you know when you stop living by emotions? Silence. A moment in time where your emotions just cannot find any words to say. Pastor Red has not mastered it, but I have grasped it to a point to where when it does occur and I don't walk in the mastery of it, it is because I have chosen not to, not because I don't know how to. I know that I must remain silent in a verbal conversation that is not, that God has not been invited into. I'm going to say that again. I know, and you know also, when you are in a conversation that God is not invited into. Because if the conversation is not because the Bible says, where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst of them. If the two of you are arguing spiritually, he's not there because that ain't in his name. That's in that's in the name of, of, of difference of beliefs. That ain't in the name. So if you ain't in the, in the if y'all ain't, how can two walk together except they be agreed? If y'all ain't walking in that, somebody's in their emotions. And you better hurry up and get out of that conversation because them emotions is going to cause your emotions to be caught on fire and you're not going to make it. How do I know that? Because I've experienced it. I've experienced it. And I've learned from the experience that when the conversation is about Christ and the person don't got a clue of who Christ is, I know when it's time to shut the conversation down and turn silent. Thank you for joining me tonight. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you for my audience. Thank you for everybody that joined me for this three-part series. I pray that they will listen to this series until they get the understanding of what it means to not say nothing to where Satan will be able to light their tongue with words not seasoned with salt and they, and they do not speak gracefully to the hearer. God, we love you. Thank you for everybody that chose to spend this hour with me listening to you. Like Jesus asked the disciples, could you not watch with me for one hour? They watched with me for one hour and for that reason, God, I ask you to pour them out a blessing that they won't have room enough to receive it. But I know, God, that you're going to do that. But if they get burned up in the fiery trial before it gets there, then they now understand why. Because the prayer went up for you to do that for them. God, we love you. It's in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you for joining me tonight. Join me Sunday morning at 8 o'clock with Pastor King. You better be there. Sunday morning, 8 o'clock with Pastor King. Spirit of Liberty Ministries. You hear a phenomenal word of God. Then I'll be back before you at 11 a.m. We're going to talk.
resurrection. We're going to talk resurrection this Sunday. I love every last one of you. God bless you. Amen and amen.